Good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Rostenberg again from BeyondMTHFR.com. Tonight's uh, discussion is going to be a two-part video series around the gut origin of methylation problems. Now, many of you out there are aware that methylation is complicated. I'm not going to disagree with that. But what I want to do through this video series is give you some new information, some new ammunition to, to look at gut problems as the source of methylation imbalances. We cannot change our genes, but we can change how those genes express, and making sure your gut is healthy is critical for that process to take place. So the research that's coming out now is well, you know, does a great job of pointing the, pointing out the connection between our digestive system and the rest of our body. Our gut isn't just a place where we digest food. Our gut is a place where our body gets in contact with the outside world. There's an exchange of information in our gut. Um, and so the microbes, the yeast, the, the bacteria that are normally present in our digestive system are there to help us get the nutrition out of our food and as well as to communicate to our nervous system to tell us which genes to turn on and express. So we can do a genetic report and see which genes are going faster or slower or and that's good to do but we also have to take note of what's happening in the gut and how that is influencing the activation of those, of those genes as well. Now the research is very clear that the gut microbes, the microorganisms in the gut, have a huge influence on our feelings of anxiety, mood, how well we think, if we have excess pain or not. And by changing the gut, making it more healthy, we can modulate or improve these conditions. That's not my opinion. That's what the research coming out right now is saying. I always like to point out that gut bacteria, yeast, E. coli, lactobacillus, clostridium, bacteria and fungus also have methylation cycles. They also make DNA. They also make and grow and repair their body. They make new parts. They have to you know, adapt to the environment quickly. And the methylation cycle allows them to do that. So when we take methylation vitamins, we are throwing fertilizer down our throat. I would like for everyone who takes vitamins and food to get the most out of that and to make sure that your body benefits from the vitamin, not something living in your gut. However, we have to make sure the gut is in a healthy working order so that that nutrition and that fertilizer that you're taking can get where it needs to go. So just remember, Gut bugs have methylation cycles too. If you're taking methyl groups based off your genetic test and you're not getting better or you're seeing your symptoms flare, you need to take note of what's happening in the gut because that's likely where a large part of the problem lies. Now SIBO is something I've spoken about before. Interested viewers uh, can look up the two videos and the post I did on SIBO. It's real important for methylation. I'll show you that in the next slide. But SIBO is on the rise. It's basically a condition where bacteria that normally lives just in your colon has grown and proliferated up into your small intestine. This creates a situation of malnutrition and really makes uh, methylation problems much worse. Um, not to mention all the other problems that go along with being malnourished. People being on antibiotics and people taking proton pump inhibitors are the main reasons why SIBO is on the rise. Those two classes of drugs, more than anything else, are responsible for creating this uh, epidemic of SIBO that we're seeing. SIBO does lots of things uh, to your body. You can look at the data in the other videos I made. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that SIBO creates an imbalance in your methylation cycle mainly by causing a, a an increase in folate and folic acid and in folate levels. It's important to know that your gut bacteria produce folic 
acid. Mankind synthesized it, but it's been in our bodies for a very long time because some gut bacteria produce it. Now, they also produce folate in the right form and, and the folic acid form. They produce all different kinds of B9. What you need to know is that when you have SIBO or a gut infection, there's too much bacteria, individuals get full of B9. At the same time, they get deficient in really critical nutrients like iron and magnesium and zinc and B12 and the fat soluble vitamins and essential fatty acids. And so you get this, this imbalance. And so this is one reason why a lot of people with gut problems have overmethylation sim symptoms because when your methylation cycle doesn't have the B12 and the other nutrients to make it work and you just take a lot of folate, well then you can just make a lot of neurotransmitters and that causes you to have insomnia, anxiety, pain, and you know OCD, compulsive behaviors, headaches, etc. So just be aware that what grows and lives in your gut absolutely influences your methylation cycle. I've talked about it before in terms of SIBO. Today we're going to be talking about it a little bit differently. There's four genes that I think are very, very susceptible to what goes on in the gut. And these genes have a massive impact on our body. I, th I think the argument could be made that the COMT gene influences our personality as much as anything else. Uh, COMT being read here, as shown on the MTHFR support report, basically means that COMT is slowed down. So the clearance of estrogen and the clearance of neurotransmitters like adrenaline and dopamine is reduced. This makes an individual very sharp, focused, detail-oriented, you know, loves to solve problems, get things done, very good at, you know, keeping things in order when they're under a little bit of stress. But if you put a lot of chaos and stress into their life, they do tend to burn out and, and, and become overwhelmed. And that's because of the side effect of all this adrenaline. So the COMT is impacted that way. Now what goes on in the gut absolutely can influence these genes. That's the main idea with this uh, video today. It's going to influence the COMT, the MAOA, the MTR, and the sulfonotransferase. All four of these genetic SNPs are impacted by stuff that comes from the gut. What grows in our gut starts when we are born. We're born sterile, and the second we enter the world, we start getting gut bacteria. It comes from our mom's mouth, from the breast, from the skin, and from the birth canal. That's how it used to be. Now, things have changed a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of dental mercury, and women are sometimes, you know, they're bottle feeding for different reasons. Uh, sometimes a woman's unable to breastfeed. Uh, you know, too much bathing, too many harsh soaps and harsh cleaners. And then, uh, you know, there's now more C-sections going on for different reasons, some for convenience, but also because women are just not as healthy as they used to be, so it's harder to bring a baby to term. So all of these factors, plus early life antibiotics, begins to destroy and alter the microbiome that we depend on for health. And I believe this is the driving force behind why methylation problems are becoming such a big issue. It's actually... Gut issues are making people with methylation genes worse, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Just another perspective here on the gut bacteria. So it doesn't just come from the gut. It comes from all over the body, and the moral of the story with this is that each individual has their own gut signature, their own um, microorganism uh, pattern that's unique to them. And you can see that in different parts of the body, as these uh, you know pie charts show, there's just different bacteria in different parts of our body. It really is a fascinating study. More and more data is coming out now, highlighting the connection between what goes on in the microbiological and the microbiome sphere and what happens in our body. So there really is this con this conversation between the bugs that live on us and the genes that that work inside us. That is the big idea. And when our bugs are healthy, we're healthy. But conversely. When our bugs are sick, we are sick as well. And people with methylation problems, they tend to get the sickest for the longest period of time. I want to highlight that the liver is, the re is the, on the receiving end of all the fun stuff that happens in your gut. So when you eat right and you digest well and your stress is managed and you're sleeping great and you're taking, you're, you're taking life in stride and your body's really firing in all cylinders, your liver's working great. 
But what happens if your gut does have an infection? What happens if you aren't digesting your food and you have an, a, a gut infection or an imbalance of bacteria? Well, the, the literature is pretty crystal, crystal clear on this. The liver is the first place that all these gut products go. You can kind of see this is an artistic rendition of bugs. They're, stuff, they're creating stuff that's leaking into our body. And things that they're making are aldehydes, ammonia, and phenols. We're going to really hit the phenols here uh, in this first video, and we'll touch on the, uh, the other products made from the gut on the second video. But just know that the liver gets uh, you know, overwhelmed with these molecules when there's too much uh, imbalance in the gut. So this I pulled out of a recent piece of research. research. I don't expect you to you know, be able to read this from where you're sitting but what you need to know is this long list of chemical uh, descriptions here of these different uh, molecules these are all phenolic compounds these are phenols phenols you may be familiar with are resveratrol or quercetin or green tea okay chocolate has phenols in there so phenols come from plants and they come from bacteria and they have health benefits no one can argue that green tea doesn't have health benefits or that resveratrol doesn't have health benefits absolutely important molecules but what we need to recognize is that phenols are going to be metabolized or broken down by genes in our body that are already going slow so if the COMT system is slowed down and we're being exposed to a lot of phenols from our gut bacteria it's going to slow down the clearance of estrogen, potentially leading to hormone symptoms like fibroids or endometriosis or you know, very severe bleeding or clotting or PMS. Or it could also lead to anxiety and pain and insomnia and OCD-like behavior because the inability to break down dopamine and adrenaline. Now these are just hypotheticals. These are th things that we see in our practice. But just know that the phenols, which are healthy in some amount, if they get into your body in high amounts, they're going to cause problems. Again, bacteria in our gut produces phenols. It's normal. It's healthy. Just like drinking a little bit of water, uh, you know, eight glasses of water a day is healthy, right? But drinking 38 glasses of water is not. So the same issue applies with these phenolic compounds from our gut a little bit healthy and good if you have too much leaking in from your gut you're gonna have an imbalance in your methylation cycle we're talking about clostridium and bifidobacterium and E. coli and other bacteria that we normally have that we should have that we have that, that are involved in gut infections these bacteria produce phenols and we guess what you know we are going to be exposed to phenols we have to get rid of them but they're going to put pressure on genes that are already going too slow therein lies the problem just as a quick reminder we break down epinephrine adrenaline dopamine in a very similar way it has to go through the COMT gene shown here so remember the down arrow means it's going slower so the the reduced function of COMT that's what we're genetically born with. So if we have a lot of phenols that we have to detox, they're going to sit in the parking space. They're going to take up that parking space that epinephrine was supposed to sit in. And so we're going to be exposed to higher levels of epinephrine over a longer period of time. That, my friends, can cause many of the symptoms that individuals with methylation problems are dealing with, especially the anxiety, the insomnia, just the inability to calm down the body, the, the fight or flight dominance. And I show this to you just to you know let you know that one way or the other, dopamine, epinephrine has to go through COMT on its way out of your body. So anything that slows down COMT is going to make a genetic SNP more problematic. We've known for at least 40 years that phenols slow down the COMT system. So this is benzoic acid. Benzoic acid is a type of phenol. It's produced in our gut. It soaks into our body every day. And if you have too much 
gut bacteria producing these phenols because you have an imbalanced gut and your digestion is not optimized. No, neither will be your methylation cycle. So here's the connection between phenols, a benzoic acid coming in from your gut, slowing down and inhibiting a gene that's already going too slow, an enzyme that's already going too slow. That's going to make an imbalance in the body and cause symptoms. Another study shows the same thing. A type of phenolic compound inhibits the COMT gene. So guys, it's not my opinion. It's just the research that one reason, just like these trucks are bottlenecking here in this horrible mess, this is like our biochemistry. So we're already born with a bottleneck when you're born with SNPs that have different color on your report. That's a, that's a SNP that's not optimum. And in the terms of COMT, it's going too slow. In terms of MEOA, it's going too slow. And the sulfonotransferase, the SULT, it's also going too slow. We can't change our genes, but we can change what our genes are required to do, how much work they have to do. And so if, you're, if your gut's in unhealthy, you're going to have phenols pumping into your system like trucks on this road. They just keep coming, keep coming, and so the bottleneck gets worse. Now what you need to do is treat your gut. And we have a program in my office that takes as little as 10 days to restore the digestive health of your body, and we have seen very rapid improvements in chronic cases by treating the gut first. It's just a wise and uh, very effective place to start. Here's a recent uh, study talking about the, sulf the sulfonotransferase systems, the SALT genes. You'll find that at the end of your report when you do your genetic report. And again, these commonly eaten foods, onions, apples, peanuts, chocolate, green tea, red wine, olive oil, Good food, healthy food, contains phenols. They will slow down the sulfur transferase gene. So if your gut is producing too many phenols, it can greatly impact your methylation cycle. I've had patients who have not been able to leave their house because of the anxiety that they feel. They've had to go on disability because of this. And by working on their gut in about four to five weeks, I have seen these patients spending multiple days in theme parks surrounded by thousands of people making memories with their family like, you know, the last five years of their life didn't even happen. So we've seen incredible turnaround with by treating the gut. We treat methylation problems every day, but I want you to recognize that the gut is a huge player. And this is just part one. We're going to follow up more on part two here shortly. Um, I want to thank you for listening and spending your time with, uh, with me on the computer. Um, methylation is a very rewarding subject, but it's, it's a very important one. And it, methylation makes individuals more sensitive to environmental toxins, to stress, and certainly to an imbalanced gut. So if you're dealing, you or someone you know is dealing with a chronic methylation problem showing up as anxiety or insomnia, pain, uh, a syndrome that doesn't fit, fit normal diagnosis, then you're likely looking at a methylation problem and you owe it to yourself and to your loved ones to look at your gut as well and make sure that the gut is working. So if you have questions about that, please reach out. I can help you figure that out. Please check out my, my website beyondmthfr.com and have a wonderful night.